Hello, I'm Adeline Hong. This summer, I participated in the SHIRT program and worked in the cell matrix interaction and tissue engineering lab on a Kaizen Delta microsphere project. First, I'm going to show you the fabrication process for these microspheres. The challenge in here is due to the opposite melting behavior of gelatin and casein. Gelatin is derived from collagen, a very abundant protein in human body, and it liquefies at high temperature while catson, on the other hand, gets more viscous when temperature goes up. So before the emulsion, gelatin is preheated to 37 degrees and chitin was kept cold. In the small vial are the crosslinkers, beta-GP and glyoxo. The emulsion is set at 2300 RPM. In order to minimize any aggregation brought by beta-GP, gelatin is added into the chitin first and then the cross-linkers are injected slowly into the mixture. Next, the mixture is pipetted dropwise into the oil. The tube is placed on the vortex the whole time for better mixing. For the first 30 minutes, the beaker is immersed in a 37 degree water bath, and then it is replaced by an ice bath, and the emulsion continues for another 30 minutes. After a total one hour emulsion, oil in the baker is collected and separated into two tubes. PBS plus L101, a surfactant, is added to wash out microspheres in the oil. The tube is centrifuged for five minutes and excessive oil on the top layer is removed. This step is repeated to remove any residual oil. After that, all the microspheres in the PBS are transferred to a small baker. This is how the microspheres look like after water in oil emulsion. The size of these microspheres can vary from 5 microns to 25 microns, depending on the temperature, viscosity of oil, and some other factors. Next, another crosslinker, Jennepin, is added to introduce further crosslinkage in the microspheres. After one night stir, the microspheres shrinks and it turns blue. Some of them may lose the spherical shape. On the second day, three times of ethanol wash with one homogenization are executed on the microspheres. And they are frozen and lifelized and eventually processed into powder form and are stored in room temperature. The microspheres can be encapsulated together with cells into microbes, which can then be used in the stem cell therapy to repair or regenerate tissue. Growth factors can be loaded in these microspheres to help control cell growth and function. The synthesis of chitin gelatin microspheres can serve to provide a potential microcarrier that produces a different release profile from pure gelatin and pure chitin ones. To examine the release pattern of these microspheres, a series of release studies were conducted, and the result shows that Given the same mass, the smaller microspheres have a greater capacity for loading and releasing protein, in this case, bovine saline albumin. In the near future, the release profiles of different kinds of microspheres will be compared, and various methods will be applied to modify the interactions between loading factors and microspheres. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to Dr. Stegman and everyone in the CMI lab, especially Kelly.